I am now going to deliver a short presentation and the topic today is how to make you and your services irresistible to potential high-end resi clients. Now, before we jump into this, I have a, before we jump into the meat of this presentation, I have a question to post to you. So here's a project I worked on a few years back that was featured on the TV show Grand Designs, which if you're um, not familiar with it, it's a show that showcases new build high-end homes and each episode is a different project. Now, I actually got interviewed for that show with a full film crew and everything, but I didn't make the final cut. Now, I didn't do the architecture on this one. I just did the engineering instead. The architect was the actual client himself. And this house was a new build in Kensington, which is a very plush part of West London. And the total build cost in this was £1 million, but it was valued at around £3 million after the job was done. And it's probably worth around four, four and a half million pounds now. Now, my fee wasn't great for this job as I got it through a mutual friend. I was only paid around two and a half thousand pounds for the engineering submission to building control department and the construction drawings. So that's around three thousand four hundred dollars. So it's not much, but this film was being filmed and showcased on a very popular TV show. However, that didn't stop the guy whinging and moaning about paying me. So here's one email he sent me during this project. And there's a man cave garage type building to the east of the property with some PV panels on top, which I thought were some roof lights. And here is the email he sent me. Now, bear in mind the small fee he's paying me and the fact he's literally paying me to make sure his house stands up. There is probably no more important part of the entire house than the structure keeping up if we're talking from a purely practical sense. However, you see that pink area there by the stairs? Well, here's a better shot of it. That's a £20,000 dance floor. I'm not kidding. That's around $27,000 for a poxy dance floor. And he moaned about paying me practically one-tenth of that, but thought nothing of splurging $27,000 on a dance floor. Now, let's not also forget this guy's an architect, a very successful architect. He knows the value of engineering. So here's my question to you. Why would he balk at paying me a miserable $3,400 for his house to stand up, but only too glad to pay $27,000 for a dance floor, which isn't far from being 10, 10 times what he paid me? So has anyone here got an idea why this is so? So if so, type it in the comment section because this is what we're going to answer in this very presentation. Because once you know what it is, then it enables you to pretty much add a zero to your fees. I'm not kidding with that statement. It's super powerful. Now, if you've been at these workshops before, you might remember that we have two types of residential client. One is Joe Soap Resi, and the other is our good friend, High End Resi. And the difference between the two is how they view and are motivated to carry out their project. Joseph Resi projects are functional in nature, which, if you think in terms of cars, is kind of like buying a secondhand Skoda. You aren't buying it to look good. You simply wanted it to get you from A to B. And as a result, you won't want to spend a lot of money on one. In fact, you'll want to buy one as cheaply as possible. And it's the same with Joseph Resi when it comes to a house. They are looking to build as cheaply as possible. And that also applies to you and your fees. High-end resi projects, on the other hand, are aspirational in nature. And again, if we think in terms of cars, this is like buying a Mercedes-Benz, or if you're really ambitious, a Ferrari. And sure, you want the car to get you from A to B, but you also want it to look good, feel good, smell good, and have a much better standard of car. So with high-end resi, it's all about the other motivations they have, far above and beyond mere dollars and cents. There are more important drivers here for them to build these types of homes. And here's the magic secret. If you want to become irresistible to high-end resi clients, then you need to know what these motivations and drivers are, and then talk about your services as being the vehicle that delivers them to what they want. And it's this that we are going to examine in this presentation. It might not be clear now, but it will be over the next 20 minutes or so. So what do clients want when they spend a lot of money on a home? Well, we can break down what clients want for their project into three categories. Number one are logical goals. Number two are emotional goals. And number three are physical goals. And these are an order of importance with logical being the least important and physical being the most important. It must also be noted that each links to the next. So we'll start at the bottom with logical goals, which is, and this is pretty much where 99% of every construction professional on the planet bases their marketing on, and it's the least powerful goal for your clients. 
Basically, logical goals, as the name suggests, are the logical reasons a client wants from their project, or the, sorry, the logical results a client wants for their project. So here are some logical goals. Building permits, planning permission, save money, save time, more space, hiring other construction professionals, processes, drawings, design, project management. These are all logical in nature, and as a result, they are commodities. Logical goals are functional in nature, and we keep coming back to Joe Soap and building a bigger home for his family. That's functional. The types of homes we are talking about are aspirational. High-end resi projects are aspirational. No one spends $2 million just to have a bigger house and have more space. There are deeper reasons at play. If someone just wanted a bigger home, they would sell up and buy, the, buy another one that is bigger, or they would simply build an addition to one they already have. And as we already stated, high-end resi is aspirational. And therefore, the clients have emotional reasons for building these homes. So what emotion is in saving money, for example? Well, there isn't any. And if someone's entire goal is the logical goal of saving money on their project, then never forget that will also apply to your fees. These people make terrible clients. Also, project process is functional and therefore logical. Do you think that a high-end resi client wakes up in the morning and says to themselves, I can't wait to get up today and give my hard-earned cash to an architect so they can sort my building permits for me? Well, of course they don't, because that's not what they want. How you deliver your services is of no interest to a high-end resi client. Do you want to know how a mechanic fixes your car when you bring it to them? Well, of course you don't. All you care about is being able to drive your car again. So it follows that all that interests the client is the house. And this is why architects get constantly undercut by other architects or home designers. If the reasons to hire you are all logical based, then these are the only criteria a client will judge you on. And ultimately, because they don't care about any of this stuff, then the only real criteria is price. And there's always someone that will do the job for cheaper. So when you look at your marketing, is it all logical stuff like we mentioned before, or is it more um, emotional stuff that we're going to look at next? If you are marketing yourself, marketing yourself on the logical level, then you are not going to get high-end residential projects or attract affluent clients. So the good news here is we have finished level one of this video game. We're now very much getting into high-end resi territory. So next up are emotional goals. Emotional goals are the underlying motivations on why someone wants to build a new high-end home and spend an absolute fortune doing so. So what are the emotional reasons and motivations that drive a client to want to undertake a project? What feelings are they looking to achieve with a project? And this is much easier to explain with an example. And we're going to look at one of the more common types of high-end resi clients, and that's a recently successful entrepreneur who after years of struggle, his business has finally hit a big, and now he wants a home to represent that success. So what is the emotion here? Well, the emotion here is status. He wants a big fancy home to show off his wealth. He wants recognition for being successful. He wants respect and he wants acknowledgement. The home represents all these things for him. Now, emotional goals are a transition between the logical stuff and the physical goals we're going to talk about next. And the reason I say that is because when we promote our services, you can't say stuff like, we provide architectural services that raise your status, get you recognition from your peers, and have people kiss your ass because you're great. And we can't say that because it's weird. And it's weird because that isn't how people think. The entrepreneur doesn't wake up in the morning and say to himself, I want status and recognition today. I think I'll talk to an architect. That's not the way we work. Instead, what we do is we visualize a scenario that happens out here in the real world, that happens out in reality. And once that visualization does become reality, then that fulfills the emotional desire for us. So, for example, our entrepreneur friend probably fantasizes about his housewarming party, where he gets to show off his new house. He isn't thinking about getting status. He's thinking about the scenario he wants to create where he gets status. Does that make sense? In other words, we look to things outside of ourselves to fulfill inner emotional desires. And most people don't even recognize the emotional desires for what they are. They are being entirely driven by these things and not even aware of it. That's how powerful this stuff is. 
So the entrepreneur wants to build a new home that represents success, status, recognition, and all that stuff for him. These are his emotional goals for the project, but it's what he visualizes about in his head that's where all the power is. And that brings us to the third and nuclear power level of physical goals. The physical goals for the project are the parts of the project that represent the fulfillment of the emotional goal for the client. Our entrepreneur friend wants status and recognition for his success. So what is status and recognition? Well, it's how other people view him. It's how he is perceived by other people. Therefore, the things he visualizes about for his projects for his project are the parts of the home that other people will see. Does that make sense? So if you were trying to get someone like this as a client, which would be more powerful? Showing them nice photos of a bedroom and fancy en suite or nice photos of a grand entrance to a property? Of course, the grand, the grand entrance is going to be of more interest because that's what other people will see. So what are the parts of a house that someone sees when they visit your home? Well, you've got the entrance, walkway and driveway. You've also got the look and style of the house. This is super important. This is the project style and it's one of the most important parts of them all. Then we have the front door, which will then open up into a hallway. You have an open plan kitchen diner. You'll have a dining room if that's separate, a living room, downstairs bathrooms, back garden rear patios, conservatories, home bars, games rooms, entertainment rooms, swimming pools. You'd also have um, guest, guest rooms and guest bedrooms. You'll find that uh, often these types of clients will spend more on the guest room than they will on their own bedroom because they're trying to impress other people. And $27,000 dance floors. This is what we spoke about before. It's the same reason. People don't see the structure of a house unless it's a deliberate feature. They do see the dance floor because that's what it's for. And that's why it's worth 10 times more to the client. So is this becoming a bit clearer to you? This is a list of the parts of a house that fulfill the emotional goal of status and recognition for our entrepreneur client. In his head, he's not saying, I want status, because people don't think that way. Instead, it's an internal emotional state that drives us, and it manifests itself in people's thoughts as a visualization, as a fantasy or movie being played out where we are the hero of the movie. And in this example, it's getting status and recognition by the people we want to impress. And you can guarantee his fantasy revolves around people seeing the spaces we just listed and saying how amazing he is and congratulating on how, how great everything is. If you covered this kind of stuff in your social media marketing or any of your marketing, do you think it would attract this type of client? Well, of course it would. And this is the content of our social media marketing efforts and all our marketing efforts when we write architectural content. You, write a, you don't write about all the logical architecture stuff. You don't write about how you deliver your services or all that any project process, hiring builders or any that kind of stuff. You write about the physical gold kind of stuff because that's what the client wants. And this is how you become irresistible to high-end resi clients. And if you're not sure what a high-end resi client really wants from their project, then the places to start are, are the parts of a home other people will see because status is involved in all these homes. However, it's not always the most important and we're going to look at another example now. So if you look at what are the highest paid professions in the world, then it's dominated by health professions. Here's a list from CEO, CEO World magazine and the top 13 on this list are all in some kind of health field. It's insane. However, these professions are hugely stressful and usually located in big cities. So a pretty popular high-end resi project is a highly paid health professional wanting to have a weekend home away from the city to unplug, unwind and relax. So the emotional goal here is to relax and recharge. The house represents health and vitality for this client. Now again, they don't get up in the morning and say to themselves, I want health and vitality and relaxation today. Instead, they get up in the morning and they fantasize about living in a beautiful home in tranquil surroundings, surrounded by nature and that kind of thing. So what would be the physical goals for, for, um, for these emotional goals of relaxation and uh, vitality? In other words, what parts of the house fulfill the emotional goals of relaxation, health and vitality? Well, location is huge in this instance. It would need to be within a two or three hour drive of the city and they're going to want to have tranquil surroundings and where better than a lake with a surrounding forest. 
So how many of you watching this, how many of you watching this now live in this kind of area and talk about this kind of stuff in your marketing? Next, the views from this property would also be super important. How many of you watching this discuss the views from properties in available land in your area on your website or social media profiles? Next, the style of the house would also be top of the list. High-end resi clients already know what style of house they want before they search for an architect. Next, the site entrance would be important as it would be both a physical and psychological borderline between their stressful work life and the tranquil weekend in their second home. So there would be a focus on that. The smell of the place would also be important. You would want a fresh air smell of nature, not the stinky, smoggy smell of the city. So maybe a timber frame house would tick that box. Where else will be important? Well, the bedroom is going to be one of the most important rooms in the house. A good night's rest goes hand in hand with relaxation. A view of the lake at the bedroom window would also be huge. Maybe a balcony off the bedroom would be a great idea too. What else could be a physical goal here? A spa room or sauna perhaps. What about an outside hot tub space? A landscaped rear garden. Once you get this rear granular with this approach, then it puts your marketing on crack. It becomes irresistible to anyone who meets these criteria. It also enables you to describe in great detail the visualization that is driving these people to go through all the time, expense and hassle in building a new home. Every architect says stuff like, we help you build your dream home. That doesn't mean anything to anyone. If you ask 100 people what dream home means, you will get back 100 different answers. However, if you want to, if you say in the example we just did, something like this, we will help you create that perfect oak frame log cabin on the shores of Lake Michigan. You know the one you've been designing and building in your mind most of your life. The one with the tree-lined entry road and the small flower garden in the front and that intricately detailed stained oak door and that warm, homely smell of freshly cut timber when you walk into your home for the first time in a couple of weeks. You walk up those beautifully carved stairs into your bedroom and you drop your bag on the floor and walk over to the window. And there, you set your gaze upon the sweeping lake view. The stress of your city job and the wear and tear of the last 14 days evaporates instantly. And now you can totally relax and recharge your batteries. It's going to be a great weekend and you just know it. So, how much more powerful is that? And what if you had some really cool rendered images of the home telling this story to go with it? Would it really matter if your actual portfolio didn't have any of these types of homes in it at all? Maybe to some, but not to most, because they will have never seen an architect say this before, stuff to them before. The physical goals of this project are all the physical representations, the things out here in the real world that they want in their new home that represents and symbolizes them getting away from the city for the weekend and away from their stress for work life to their weekend sanctuary lake house. Physical goals are all lifestyle based and are rooted in the real world. Physical, physical goals are all specific, tangible and have clarity. And when you describe it to 100 people, pretty much everyone can agree on what it means. This is where you want to be with your marketing. And because this is the stuff that high-end resi clients really want. Your marketing needs to create a movie in the mind of your potential client that they are already having. And it doesn't matter if they don't exactly match. As long as the movie you create gives them the positive emotions they want, then you've got them. They feel that you understand them even better than they do themselves. And once someone feels you understand them, then they automatically assume you can help them too. You need to remember there's a big difference between a person who builds a new home versus someone who buys one. Building a new home is a lot more of a personal experience. And if you could show that you understand where they're coming from, you've pretty much got them before they ever talk to you. And that's what successful marketing and successful social media marketing is all about. So here's the difference between struggling architects and successful ones. Struggling architects sell architectural services. They try and sell drawings, project processes, hiring builders, and all that kind of stuff. Successful architects sell a future the client wants. Architectural services are only the means to getting this future. Your marketing must be entirely focused around this future that they want. In other words, everything you use to promote your services must revolve around the emotional and physical goals they want from the project. And this is how you become irresistible to high-end resi clients. This is also why you don't need fancy portfolios or websites. All you need are some decent 3D renderings of the parts of the project that mean most to them, because that is enough to get them engaged with you and talking about their project. 
And this is why bigger, more established architects don't matter, because no one markets their services like this. No one is telling these kinds of people they understand them and what they want, which is why they go to several architects and then get them to fight at each other for the job. You were told to state the many problems you solve and how you solve them. That's Joseph Rezzi stuff. In high-end Rezzi, there is only one problem at the very start, and that is finding an architect who understands their vision from the outset. Most marketing courses are about getting a client's vision when they talk to you. This is backwards. How can you get someone's vision if they never talk to you? Instead, we get this granular with our marketing, so when a potential high-end resi client sees it, they instantly say to themselves, this is made for me, because it has. And that is how you add a zero to your fees.